the NCAA championship meet is the only one on the calendar that actually matters if your goal is to become a legend in the NCAA. It's where Christian Coleman broke the collegiate record just weeks before beating Usain Bolt in the world championship meet and where Grant Holloway went undefeated in every single hurdle race that he ever entered before he became a world champion. Once again, just weeks later. But from time to time, somebody does something so ridiculous, we'll probably never see it again. Well, Jerry and Lawson is that man. He competed for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And right now in 2023, they are hands down the best program in the entire NCAA, top to bottom. But you wouldn't know that when he was there, because in 2016, he showed up to the NCAA championship meet practically by himself because he scored more than half the points on his entire team. In fact, had he showed up and left everyone else at home, he still would have finished sixth in the entire nation all by himself. So here is the story of Jerry and Lawson, who is honestly a forgotten superstar. But whether or not you were paying attention, there will likely never be another athlete just like him for a very long time. And this is why. And if anything that I say actually connects with you, it is always greatly appreciated if you would like and subscribe. But if I don't, just let me know in the comment section because I try to read them all. First things first, Jerry and Lawson's NCAA championship performance in 2016 was quite literally the meat of his life. He won the 100 meter dash, 200 meter dash, and the long jump, all before helping Arkansas to finish third in the four by 100 meter relay. But before that competition, his final meet as a senior his dominance started all the way back at the high school level. He was actually the best long jumper and triple jumper in the state of Texas as a senior. And get this, he never ran the 100 or the 200 officially at the high school level. I'm not making this up, not even once, which was probably for the best because the year that he graduated, Texas had the Gatorade Athlete of the Year sprinting in the 100 meter dash. Those performances were good enough to earn him a scholarship to Arkansas, the same program that had already won national championships with Tyson Gay and Wallace Spearman on the team. And as a freshman, he got to work immediately, finishing fourth in the NCAA indoor meet in the long jump. He actually ran the 200 meter dash outdoors for the first time on record and ran legitimately fast he went 21-20. It's fine if you're running in the Northeast Conference, but in the Southeastern Conference, the SEC, that ain't getting you far. But as a sophomore, he competed indoors and won the entire NCAA in the long jump. By this point in his career, he was already moving away from the triple jump entirely and beginning to focus more on the sprints. He didn't make a conference final in any sprinting events yet, and he underachieved outdoors, only competing at the NCAA championship meet as a relay body. Keep in mind, this man had already won a national title indoors as a sophomore, so we knew that he had talent. He was just waiting to put it all together. His junior year, he still got it done indoors and went second in the long jump, but he finally made a sprint final, going fifth in the 100 meter dash in the SEC championship meet. But weeks later, he shot the world, going third at the NCAA championship meet in the 100 meter dash, running 9.90 seconds when desisted. Yet this is where things get interesting because entering his senior year, Jarian now knew he was a legit sprinter as well as a long jumper. With the triple jump now far behind him, the coaches at Arkansas made a plan to prepare him for the Jesse Owens triple in the 100, the 200, and the long jump. He made the NCAA indoor final in the 60 and won the long jump once again. But outdoors, he finally made the finals 
of all of his events at the FEC Championship meet. He didn't get a medal in either of the sprint races, but he still won the long jump. And the only thing that matters is that he was there in the final because the SEC Championships is basically a pre-national meet anyway. And the rest is history because Jerry and Lawson then went out on the track and did the unthinkable. He won the 100 meter dash at the NCAA Championships. A man who had never won a college meet in that event ever up until that point. He won the long jump, which isn't a surprise anymore, but nobody really expected him to do anything in the 200. But Jarian proved them wrong and won that event as well, beating Christian Coleman, a future world champion, to do it. The 30 points he scored all by himself would have stood for sixth in the nation. And that means he literally could have competed for any team in Division I and it really wouldn't have mattered. As long as you had him in your uniform, you were gonna finish sixth in the nation at the very least. But he did all that for Arkansas. So the rest of the help they gave him pushed the entire team up to second place, losing to the Florida Gators. Since that time, Jerry and Lawson have basically focused on the long jump ever since. He's an Olympian and the world championship silver medalist who never won a 100 meter dash competition since his NCAA championship run. And he's actually never officially run a 200 meter dash since that moment. I don't know what the future of Jerry and Lawson's career will look like, or if we've even seen the last of him. But one thing is for certain, we will never forget the man who literally was the team that dominated the entire NCAA, all by himself. I'm Coach Rob, and thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe.